Chapter One. The alien hive was exactly at Hollywood and Vine. The god of the bugs alone knew if the sliming, sucking, skulking bastards knew the cultural significance of the intersection they'd chosen. In truth, that section of La La Land wasn't exactly what it had once been. But then, nothing in Los Angeles was these days. And the fact that they chose to infest the old creaking bank building, in what was, after all, comparatively open territory, testified to the fact that this batch's IQ seemed rather low. Still, thought Captain Alexandra Kozlowski, as she stood a block away from the sun-faded concrete, dialing the polarizing filter down on her faceplate against the grim and gritty Southern California sun. You could count on each and every one of the merciless mother killers being just as mean and nasty and ornery as the worst of the last hive she'd exterminated for Uncle Sam. Who are you going to call? Bug Busters. Oddly enough, it felt good to be back in an e-suit, clunky helmet and all. She turned to the hunky lieutenant to her left, already sweating in his armour. Got your jockstrap on tight, Lieutenant Michaels? You want to check? The square jaws grinned defiantly and the blue eyes crinkled. Maybe later. She winked and chinned her radio. Approaching Hive 009, LA Sector B-47. She chinned her radio off and gave a significant look to the platoon under her command. 69th Platoon. A-O-E. Alien Occupation Eradication. The toughest soldiers in the biz. They all looked back at her, smiles covering what she knew was fear. A fear she felt in her own heart. A fear every time she got near the things. Roger, it's a go, Captain. Crackled the command voice over her radio. Commence exploratory and extermination. Backup targeted. In Captain Alexandra Kozlowski's humble opinion, the backup should have been all that was necessary. A couple of Bora missiles with multi-K payloads, primed to go off when the sensors were buried in alien hive musk. Just burn the bastards, erase them, destroy. However, with the numbers of aliens so significantly reduced on this, the 18th year following the Alien Earth War, scientists and private interests wanted carcasses, pickled eggs, photographs, and any royal jelly that could be scarfed up. This meant personal delivery. Service with a death grin. Rock and roll and kill. Well, it kept a lot of kids out of gangs anyway. The other 20 members of this assault squad had the same radios in their suits and heard the same message. But Kozlowski gave the hand signal anyway, just to reinforce her command. And to assure herself of it as much as to remind her bug guys. They rolled out. They were just foot soldiers marching alongside the anchor vehicle, a Mark 23 access tank. In this kind of operation, if you needed extra ammo or just a quick ham sandwich, not to mention a little close-up heavy artillery, it was nice to have a big metal brother along. The metal treads chewed up old concrete and worn metal stars on the Walk of Fame as the troop approached their objective. Almost immediately, they broke through the ribboned perimeter that had been staked out when the authorities for what was left of Los Angeles had determined the existence of the hive in the old Bank of America building. Basically, this informed the natives that this was a danger zone, that if they trespassed, no sweat off legal backs, they were likely to become egg fodder. Even here, 50 metres from the objective, 
Kozlowski could see the hardened ooze of the hive stuff filling up the building's windows and frozen down the side. Hey, Koz, said Lieutenant Michaels. Why did the bug cross the road? <sighs> to get to the other side, wreak havoc, kill and spread its kind, and generally give life a bad name, you asshole. She barked back. You heard it before. You know I hate jokes when I'm working. Just smart-ass remarks. As long as they're mine, subordinate officer Michaels. He glared at her, and she started defiantly as they marched along. It was a way they'd found they could get up for a heavy mission like this. Afterward, when the acid got sluiced from their suits and any wounds were mended, she and Michaels also had another tradition. Strip and hump each other's sweaty bodies like bloody bunnies. Ain't love grand, thought Kozlowski, as she let her keening hormones blend with adrenaline and regulation army boosters for what brewed up to be a regular kamikaze cocktail. She and Michaels had been an item for a year now, which in this idiot's army was just about a lifetime. The favourite gag around the barracks was that if the captain and the lieutenant ever got hitched and pregnant, the spawn would come out charging its birth parent. It was still up in the air in the minds of the privates as to who that would be. With a flamethrower in one hand, a missile launcher in the other, and a grenade in its mouth. As for Kozlowski, she was always just glad that they could spend any time together at all. They'd met in the service, and he fit her like a hand in a glove. He was a couple of years younger than her 28, an army brat who'd spent his younger years first in a safe area on Earth, then off-world after the evacuation. He was smooth and fit, a devotee of exercises and sports, a big blonde package of sexuality that she never grew tired of unwrapping. Captain Alex's muscles and scars had been earned in the field. Even before she'd joined the army, she'd been battling the aliens. Her parents, landowners in Montana, had stayed and battled the things. She'd lost her brothers to the monsters. Her mother had died of a broken heart. And her pop, well, her pop was a tangle of mean gristle and bone and determination, eternally guarding his ranch under the big blue sky against the critters from beyond. And Alex? Well, Alex was just a chip off the old tendon, a small-breasted, big-hipped storm cloud of a gal, feisty as an undefeated bantamweight fighter, she had a brunette haircut from the bowl on the head salon, dark eyebrows like accents over burning hazel eyes, and a pair of scars like parenthesis over a classically cut face. She could fight or make love with equal abandon. She just wasn't sure which she liked better. A burnt stench was hanging over the area, moving down from the Cahuenga Pass like a curse, Smog hung over the rest of the city like a stubborn spirit condemned to hell, but staying put. The squad rolled along with practiced ease to the hole that was the principal entrance to the nest. Ten meters from the entrance, she chinned her radio and commanded a halt. Okay, main thrust force, double line, let's move it. However, before they could even assemble, the defenders struck. Five large bugs, the sun gleaming on their carapaces, their prehensile skeletal tails snapping behind them, scuttled from the frontmost tunnel, just below the crooked sign that read, Bank of America. Jesus! Guns! She cried, unstrapping her own 45mm blaster. Rodriguez, swivel and fire! Take cover! 
like the crack team they were. The soldiers broke ranks and took positions as though this were all in the plan. Even as Kozlowski lowered her rifle, the turreted guns on the tank angled and aimed. A nanosecond later, they spoke, hurling a frenzied hail of fire at the enemy. Kozlowski found her crosshairs, aligned them on the closest alien, a twisted thing with a burned or deformed forelimb, and squeezed off a charge. The stream of fiery energy tore off its feet at what served as its kneecaps. The thing acted as though losing its limbs was an everyday affair, slavering as though in anticipation of burying its secondary jaws in Kozlowski's throat. The Xeno raced onward. The others let loose with their own weapons, only staggered beats behind Kozlowski and the tank. The resulting fire tore the X's apart, arms and heads and deadly acid blood flew and spattered. Entrails blew across the street. One of the banana-shaped heads rolled towards them like a lobbed bomb. Instinctively, Kozlowski aimed and fired, crushing and rendering the thing a charred, fragmented skull. She gave them a moment to play a little more fire at the things, just in case, and then ordered a cease. The smoke slowly cleared, revealing the scattered, steaming remains of the bugs. What the hell was that? said Michaels, taking in a hoarse breath, sweat now pouring down his temples. Ultimately, as always, it was their trained reflexes that saved them. This kind of offensive action in midday hardly ever happened with the aliens. Kozlowski shook her head. Don't know. These bugs, they're getting weird. Big sons of bitches, muttered Sergeant Garcia, lifting his helmet to spit onto the street. Yes, said Michaels. Maybe we'd better send a robo in there. Right. You think the army's going to waste good robots when they've got cheap soldiers? Kozlowski snorted disgust, lifted her faceplate, hawked and spat out a gob of phlegm on one of the smoking bodies. Come on. These Xenos have got something in there they don't want us to have which makes me want it. Michaels nodded, but Alex detected a glint of fear in his eyes, of vulnerability and foreboding. A pang of empathy sprang inside her. The poor guy. Spiking the X's wasn't second nature to Peter Michaels. He hadn't jammed his instinctive horror and terror of the things back into a rock-hard ball to use against them. For a moment, she wanted to hold him. Hold him and tell him that it would be okay, that this was just a destructive game, and when it was over, she'd soothe his hurts and make everything all right. But she couldn't. She was in charge here. She was the dominant, and she had to pretend she'd left her femininity back in the makeup case in her locker. All right, groaners, pop them if you got them, and let's get in there while their carapaces are around their ankles. A half-hearted cheer sounded in her earphones as she dialed out a pill for herself. One second, two seconds. Hold the nose, open the gums, look out stomach, here it comes. She opened her mouth just in time to accept the dosage of whale. Getting it intravenously was faster, but the designers of these suits hadn't figured out how to safeguard soldiers from accidentally getting jammed with drug-filled needles. Pills were just fine with Coz. She had an oral fixation anyway. She took lots of pills. Oodles. The higher-ups not only didn't mind, they helped supply them. Yep. Things sure were different in this gal's army. 
All right, assholes, let's roll. Holding her gun at the ready, she waved them on, and the mechanical pack kicked into motion again, heading for that door into X-Land. By the time they made it to the otherworldly entrance, the drugs had kicked in. Kozlowski felt a power, an elation, a sense of belonging, and an army urge to fuse her forces into a brilliant battering ram and crush out this threat to Earth. Primal, territorial urges were tapped. She was the leader of a Neanderthal pack guarding her tribe from saber-tooths. She was the head of a village on the English coast guarding her kin from marauding Vikings, broadsword gleaming in the lightning. She was Gaia guarding her precious brood from cosmic crawly interlopers. The suited soldiers entered the hole into the bank building without incident. They continued down the tunnel. It was like a tube through a cancer. Noxious drippings oozed along the sides. X-holes always had an acrid, unnerving stench. Alex had already kicked in her filters. Looks like a normal hive to me, said Michaels. I hope this is a by the book. Only these Xenos want to be stars. I bet they're all wearing sunglasses and sporting tans, said Garcia. Well, this is the only take we're going to have on this production, said Alex, bringing up her rifle. Lights, camera, action, guys. They came up to a narrower passage that dived downward. The tank won't fit, barked the machine's operator into her ear. Yeah, said Alex. I figured as much. Okay, you stay here, sentinel duty. The rest of us, we go down. Looks routine to me, but expect the unexpected anyway. Got it? Yes, sir, chimed the voices of the units cacophonously in her ear. Good. I want the short rangers out on the horn tip. Two men with Mark V crankers, the equivalent of high-tech sawed-off shotguns, trundled up to take the lead, and they were off to see the lizards. Within 25 yards, the tunnel opened up into a large underground chamber, the remains of a huge vault basement, daubed with alien gunk. Give me some light, said Alex, and the guys obliged her by turning up their suit lanterns. The chamber blazed with incandescence, but as usual, in these kinds of places, Alex Kozlowski wasn't crazy about what she saw. Against one of the tenebrous walls hung people, alien egg sacs, Live people, impregnated with alien young. Chest bursters that looked like they were about to blow at any minute. The victims, ten men, five women, hung at the edge of death, dangling like corpses that had forgotten to rot. Agents, said Garcia. What? said Kozlowski. Hollywood agents. That building got overrun by bugs last week down the road. The dark-skinned man nodded towards the ropey remains. The Creative Talent Agency, one of the diehards of the entertainment industry that stuck it out here in LA. He walked forward to have a closer look, remaining cautious. Yeah, yeah, I remember, said Michaels. Whole building blew up. The assumption was that everyone was killed. Looks like they're still making deals, said Kozlowski. One of the agents, a woman in a shredded dark black jumpsuit, her hair a mat of grease, slimy green threads clamped into her skull, seemed in some netherworld of delirium. 
she had on an ear tab that sprouted artfully into a thin microphone, and she was mumbling dramatically into it. Garcia stepped back into the ranks, clucking his tongue. Too far gone, all of them. Kozlowski nodded. She'd suspected as much. If you caught an egger early, you had a pretty good chance of squeezing out the spark of new life in it. But this far along, a baby Zeno was so linked up in its parasitic position amid vital tissue that even if you were able to yank the X out without it boring a hole in you, there was no way you could save the donor. Kozlowski knew what had to be done. There were precedents. She'd done it before and would probably do it again. She was just following orders. Orders that made sense. That didn't mean that she liked it. <sighs> Needles, she whispered. Three of the men were certified executioners in this kind of circumstance. They brought out their air pistols, tapped in cartridges of darts filled with a fast-acting poison that shut down the nervous system first, then destroyed the body. Two of the men had grim frowns as they aimed. The other man, Dickens, was an LA native. Dickens had been a writer and producer and actor in LA. Dickens was grinning. Put the poor bastards out of their misery, commanded Kozlowski. Thwip, thwip, thwip. Three of the hanging bodies shuddered and then were still. Quickly, the executioners finished their task, then stepped back. Okay, quick, before the bursters hit their rejection buttons, Kozlowski screamed. Two men had readied themselves. They stepped forward. One sprayed a thick fluid on the bodies and stepped back. The other, with a high-density flamethrower, stepped forward and with fire condensed to incredibly high temperatures, immolated the dangling egg sacs. When the smoke cleared, all that was left was blackened, incinerated ashes. Good. Now let's go slag the exes that did this, barked Kozlowski. Amen, said Lieutenant Michaels, pale, with sweat shining on his brow. Of course, they weren't just here to slag Zenos. Nope, that would be too easy. In this day and age, in a disintegrating place like the City of Angels, theoretically you could just slip a limited nuke down a nest and skedaddle. Easy, quick, and a minimum of lost soldiers. However, although that nuclear holocaust up in the Pacific Northwest years back had certainly turned the tide in the Alien Earth War, giving humanity a hope of getting its planet back. Such extreme measures weren't used these days. For more reasons than just the glowing glands they tended to produce in neighbouring villages. No, these Xenos had their uses these days. And damn them for it. Okay, fall out! The chamber's probably down that tunnel there, called Kozlowski. Garcia! You got it, sir, said the grizzled vet. These bogs haven't changed that much, and this tunnel looks like the anteroom to where we're headed. What I ain't seen, though, is enough bugs. These hellhounds know we're here. I don't get why they didn't try and protect their progeny. Something stinks. Could be they're out there somewhere, said Michaels. Could be lots of things. Garcia grunted. Yeah, lots. We're here and we'll do what we came to do and second guess later. We've got artillery guarding our asses and we've got firepower. Now move it! 
Kozlowski growled in a low, no-bullshit voice. She'd perfected it when she realized she had to order men around. Lowered voices worked well with dogs and human males. The troop descended quickly, but cautiously, illumination lamps picking out their direction for them down the foul, mucousy passageway. Kozlowski would have liked these missions much better if she could just obliterate all the Xenos. However, there were two things that the army wanted her to haul out these days. A couple of bug bodies, dead of course. Random DNA samples. And whatever royal jelly from the Queen's chambers they could tap. Gold from outer space. Some of the top brass were calling it these days. Bug juice. The lab coats were going absolutely nuts for it. And there was talk about all kinds of new possible uses for the stuff. With the US government pretty much busted, private industry had suddenly become the main financial backer for the armed forces. Drug companies, mostly, along with other medical and scientific researchers. The government wanted their share, of course, but when push came to shove, the interest groups holding the biggest bucks in their outstretched hands got the biggest shovelful of goop. Alien royal jelly. The stuff that made the right kind of drones into queens. Food of the Xeno gods. Kozlowski wasn't entirely sure what they needed it for. Hell, it could just be Gab, and they were collecting the stuff for nothing. But it was what the upper brass told them to do, and so they did it, without questioning. The scuttlebutt that she heard was this. Each hive was based around a queen. Queens bred drones. However, only a certain kind of bug could breed queens. The so-called queen mother none of which existed on Earth now. Rumour had it that it was the Queen Mother Royal Jelly that was the primo stuff. Regular jelly had its uses, but it was nothing compared to the QM gunk. In truth though, Kozlowski had other more important things to think about, like staying alive. There were all kinds of differences between alien hives and insect hives on Earth. Scientists didn't really understand the full activities of the beasties. Was their communication telepathic or some weirder somatic buzz? It had already been established that the wavelengths of a queen's call could be picked up by human dreamers. One of the best ways of scoping out obscure hive locations was listening to these sensitive dreamers who acted as receivers, and, in the best circumstances, as locators. Just what did the monsters want? Where had they come from? What were they doing? Where were they going? What was their cosmic destiny? Were they so grouchy because the race had gotten up on the wrong side of their galactic beds in some prehistoric star day? Kozlowski had a theory. They'd accidentally eaten all their males, and were on one hell of a PMS jag. The theory wasn't exactly scientific, but it did explain a lot. Here were all these hysterical bugs with no men to scream at. Anyway, the core truth of what they were doing down here was the tanks in the cart that Private Henderson drove. Of course, to get to the jelly, you had to off the royalty first and this was probably the most onerous task that anybody could want in this kind of situation. Corporal Michelin's head snapped up from a radar set. Incoming, he said. 25 yards ahead, sensor range, picking up five bogies, coming in at five clicks per hour, same direction. Kozlowski was almost relieved. This dead silence was getting to her. Okay, dig in, and I want a man with his weapon trained on the ceiling. Adams, you can shoot Skeet. I've seen them break through and jump down from above. If they do that, 
I want them dead before they hit the ground. Yes, sir. She didn't have to notify the front or rear guards. They were already down and dug in, ready for the attack. Kozlowski threw a beam of light down on the floor. Solid looking enough, but she was ready if any of the bastards popped up from that direction. With bugs, you just didn't know where they could pop up from. They couldn't teleport, that much was known. But for all of that, sometimes it seemed like they could. And the commanding officer who underestimated them usually ended up as dead as her men. Or worse. In this case though, what the sensors showed was all the hive was throwing at them. Five bugs. Plenty though. As soon as they scrambled into view, the frontmost boys let loose a barrage of fire. Down here in the claustrophobic darkness, Kozlowski felt the familiar tug of total irrational fear. Trapped in a coffin fear. Preternatural mammal hiding from the dinosaur fear. That was one of the unnerving intellectual aspects of the bugs. They seemed to have been designed specifically to grip those hard claws deep into the softest parts of your soul. And squeeze. The bugs dodged the first bolts. Awareness of human weapons was either bred or trained into them by their maturity these days. They were earth bugs and they were ready to scrap with earth people. However, the soldiers had also been trained and better. Countless simulations gave them a sense of exactly where the things would hop in their erratic jumps. A bolt hit one. The explosion shattered it, splattering its viscous blood over the whole corridor. Duck, damn it! cried Kozlowski, hitting the dirt, as the acid blood sprayed every which way. The stuff could bore through the best armour if you got enough on you. She peered up through the smoke. The boys were still firing away, but crouched low and off to the side. Knees and head! She cried. Knees and head! You hit the head, the things died with a minimum of acid splatter. You hit the knees, you had the bug on the ground and a good chance for the head. Alex Kozlowski immediately saw that she was going to have a chance to show them. A bug, minus a right arm, had broken loose and was scampering along the side wall. Alex lifted her weapon and squeezed off two quick but carefully aimed shots. The first missed, exploding far away, but the second caught the left knee dead on, shattering the joint and causing the alien to go down. Garcia's next shot caught it right in its banana brain with a satisfying thud and a soft kaplow like an M80 in a gourd. With this guidance, the boys calmed down and picked off the rest of the things. The fireboys cleaned up the wriggling jaws and claws with a dose of concentrated high temp and then applied a splash of acid neutralizing spray to get through. Kozlowski allowed herself a smile. They'd killed lots of aliens already without so much as a stubbed toe. Good work, chums, but don't get cocky. The toughest part is straight down there, in the general direction of hell. Hey, don't we know it, said Michaels. Pretty darn bunch of bugs, though, said Garcia. They're not exactly known for their high IQs, said Kozlowski. But they're neither are grunts, so I don't want any slackers. Move it! We're not exactly in unfamiliar territory now. Chances were the Xenos were about as ready as they could be for the attack, but that didn't mean it was good for the men to rest on their laurels. Best to use the adrenaline and other performance augmenting drugs while they were peaking. They traipsed over the dead, crackling things in the tunnel, trundling into the darkness. The corridor widened and their lamps illuminated a chamber. 
In the center, like a giant flower bulb of chitinous flesh, grew the throne, the storage place for the royal jelly and home of the spawning queen. Kozlowski had been in these places before. That didn't mean she was used to them. The hole was like death's uterus, with hubs and cordings and odds and ends of effluvia that, while biological, seemed anti-life. Every cell in her body rebelled at the sight presented here. Training and experience and resolve fought with a deep instinct in her to turn and run. A bent, insane frieze of alien sculpture, a mockery of life. Otherwise, the chamber was empty. What the hell? said Michaels. Where are they? Garcia looked like if he hadn't had a helmet, he would have very much liked to have scratched his head. I don't understand. Where's the freaking queen? Off at the Hollywood high spots? Quipped a jokester. I don't like it, said Kozlowski. Get back. The queen doesn't leave her chamber unless there's a damned good reason. Michaels shook his head. Look, we've got a pot of royal jelly waiting to be tapped. Half the time, the stuff gets blown up or burnt. He grabbed a tapper and started walking towards the bulb. I say, let's get this stuff tanked right now and we're assured a good supply. No matter if we take out these bugs or not. Michaels, halt! Screeched Kozlowski. I'm not certain that junk is all that valuable. It's certainly not worth the extra risk. You're not going anywhere. That's an order. Michaels stopped in his tracks. He turned around, his eyes flaming. Kozlowski could see the drugs in those eyes and the male pride. Don't do this to me, Cos, said those eyes. Don't be so damned protective. Yeah, lover boy might get himself a boohoo, said a veiled voice in baby talk. What have you got on the censors? Kozlowski demanded. The private looked up from the telltale board. Activity, but nothing close. Come on, Captain. I could have started tapping by now. Yeah, we get our quota, we get extra leave. She didn't like it. Not one bit. But there wasn't any good reason to say no. And if she didn't let Michaels do this, the other jerks here would call it favoritism. And she couldn't deny that. Okay. But I want the rest of you to back him up. And Daniels, you go along. No problem, said the tough army man. Damn it, Peter. Why are you doing this to me? The rest of you, fan out and check for other exits. The men, grateful for action, spread out. What do you think, Garcia? She asked the sergeant as Lieutenant Michael strode for the huge bulb. I don't know, sir. It's not like the bugs to leave their jelly unguarded. The soldier walking off to one side looked up from his instruments. Sir, I'm reading lower rooms. There's chambers, sir, and just as big as... The lieutenant was just driving in the tap, connected to a couple of storage tanks. Daniels had slung his rifle in order to help with the tricky manipulation. It came to her like thunder. This wasn't the main chamber. And if it wasn't what they were really after, then it was a... Michaels! Daniels! Screamed Kozlowski. Get away from... Trap. The bulb split open like a pregnant belly and the baby was deadly as death itself. Jesus! cried Daniels, leaping back, pulling his rifle down. The emerging bug struck out with the speed that still was astonishing to see, 
even though Kozlowski had seen it many times before. It grabbed Lieutenant Michaels by the arms and pulled him up. It had been hiding inside. The alien was just waiting for them to tap. Michaels screamed as he was hoisted upward in the claws. The secondary jaws, slathering drool, rammed against the reinforced helmet, cracking it. Michaels screamed again. Automatically, Daniels fired his rifle. Only yards away, the shell hit its mark. The mark, though, was the torso of the beast. A gory hunk of creature was torn away, and like a burst vessel, alien blood pumped. The secondary jaw whacked into Michael's helmet again, cutting a hole before the thing began to crumple. Michaels fell under it, and Kozlowski, helpless, watched as the alien blood spouted into the interior of her lover's helmet, directly into his face. The scream ratcheted through the radio until the radio was killed. It seemed to grow louder and more horrible, carried only by the fetid air. The acid worked with amazing quickness upon the face. It was as though she were watching time-lapse photography. The skin sizzled off, snapping with gooey bubbles. The eyes boiled and melted. The screaming stopped. The skull began showing and then the acid began to eat through that, frying Lieutenant Peter Michaels' brain. No! cried Kozlowski. She grabbed up her rifle and was about to riddle the beast with slugs. A hand on her suit's shoulder stopped her. Garcia. Don't. You're in charge here, Captain. Stay in charge. The alien slumped, twitching. The burnt remains of her lover mixed into a liquid, unholy embrace. Check on him, she said tersely. If only I hadn't let him go, I knew there was something wrong. He's gone. I said check on him, she bellowed. If he's not... I don't want him to suffer. Garcia nodded. He stepped over to the bodies, gingerly nudged the lieutenant with the butt of his rifle. Acid mixed with smoking gore rivuleted out into a horrible puddle. It burned straight through the floor, leaving a ragged, smoking hole. Dead. Right, said Kozlowski. She could feel the iron grip of control exert itself, and she was in command again. There's another chamber, and that's where we're going. No more heroics, you assholes! She took a breath. No more carelessness, or I swear to God, if the bugs don't kill you, I will! The silent squad followed the telltale to their destination. Lieutenant Alexandra Kozlowski tongued for another pill. She swallowed it and her tears. <laughs>